Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today I wanted to take a quick look at the Hewlett Packard G6 2000 series line of laptops. Now the G series line is one that I've had a fair bit of experience with as quite a few people that I know have bought in these because of their affordability and their availability, especially at big box retail stores. And what these essentially offered was a good balance of affordable, dedicated GPUs, very often coupled with AMD processors. This particular unit is the G6 2040NR and it was sporting the AMD A6 4400M, but also came in three other main processor types, and I'll put those up on the screen here. And depending on which processor you got, you got integrated GPUs or discrete GPU options that were switchable. I'll put that up there in a way that hopefully makes sense and you can read all of that information as you so choose to do. When these came out, they were about a 500 US dollar laptop, so at about $200 for Canada, and they were decent. And what I mean by decent is that they spent money in the areas where the consumer would probably see it in the store and then immediately actually want to buy it. So things like Dolby Sound, glossy displays, even though they weren't HD, at least not in this model, large keyboards with numpads. If you were a business person, this is pretty nice. You did have USB 3.0 featured as well. So there was a lot to like. When you put your hands on the palm rest, things are actually uh, pretty durable with very little flex, even in the keyboard area. However, they did kind of cheap out in one area. And I don't say cheap out in the sense that they, you know, tried to sneak something in on the consumer because, you know, you're only paying so much for a laptop. It's not going to be premium build quality throughout. That's just a reality that you need to accept. It has to do with the top case. Now, the top case on the G series has been uh, a bit of a problem ever, well, as long as I can remember. So I actually have another G4 that I'll feature on the channel someday. They all have the same major issues, and that is with display failure. This one has actually had its display replaced twice, and the second display pretty much failed immediately. So needless to say, this laptop has had its last hurrah. And that's one of the things that I wanted to draw to your attention uh, in this video. Normally I go through ports and things and then do conclusions afterwards, but I'm going to do the conclusion right now. These are cheap disposable laptops. They're not really designed to be used outside of their warranty period. And to be honest, the amount of money that you'll spend servicing the parts on this, go get a used ThinkPad. Not every laptop made by every company is going to you know, survive the long haul. Every corporation that makes a computer has this model that says, hey, you have money, we have a computer, let's do a transaction. Let's go ahead and go through the basics of this particular unit. And then, yeah, I'll have some closing thoughts for you at the very end. On the left-hand side, we have VGA, HDMI, network, two USB 3.0, a independent headphone and microphone jack, and an SD card reader. And then along the right-hand side, we have the CD, DVD, uh, or Blu-ray combo drive, USB 2.0, your barrel plug for power, and then of course your Kensington lock slot. That's really all you've got. So very quickly I'm going to show you how to service this machine, and by service it I mean take out the RAM on the hard drive so you can put it in another one. So let's go ahead and flip that over, and I'll show you how to access all the goodies. Alright, first thing we got to do is remove the battery, latches here, push it, and it hinges out. It is worth noting that if you install the battery incorrectly, you can easily break this switch and removing the battery can be loads and loads of fun. This is actually an original battery, which is pretty rare to see these days, and has 47 watt hours. On the inside of the case, you will see all of the model information. It's not printed anywhere. You also need to remove the battery uh, to even open up the access cover. So let's go ahead and open that access cover and see what we have waiting for us on the inside. There is a single screw in the center that we're going to remove. So with that screw spun out, what we do is we just go ahead and push this down, and then we can go ahead and remove the drawer. On the inside, we pretty much have all the upgradable components staring us in the face. We have our two RAM slots located right here. The RAM here is four gigabyte DDR3, 
SD RAM. One slot is currently occupied, but there is room for another. We do have our Wi-Fi card hanging out over here, and then we have our and then we have our hard drive using the Protect Smart HP technology, whatever it, that actually turns out to be. Removal of the hard drive is pretty simple. We move over here, remove this catch, feed the cable out, and then we can go ahead and just lift the drive up and out. And then if you want to replace this, you just simply remove this connector that they've installed on the back and you can put it in there, no big deal. Removal of the optical bay is no issue either. We have one screw right here that is holding the drive in place. We can go ahead and spin that out. It is easily removable. And then there's a access port where we just take a screwdriver and push on the back of the drive. Then we take our bent paper clip into the release port to eject the drive. And then we can wiggle it out. The only other thing that we're going to be removing without a complete teardown of the entire laptop is going to be the keyboard. There is a pictogram here. We'll go ahead and spin that screw out. Using a plastic pry tool here, we just want to go along and release those clips. And we actually want to move the keyboard out of these bottom, the bottom part. This keyboard is not the easiest to remove. There is a, there we go, quite a few aggressive clips holding it in. Then we can flip it over, disengage the ribbon cable, and then and remove the keyboard. We can also see the ribbon cable for the trackpad as well, which requires pretty much a disassembly of the entire machine. Reassembling requires you to press very firmly at the top of the keyboard to make sure that all of the clips are engaging appropriately. So now that we have this back together, let's go ahead and just have some final thoughts. This computer was a uh, that'll do at the time. If you come across one of these in the year 2020, chances are pretty good it's on the last legs of its life, if not uh, getting very, very close. It's really hard to recommend a consumer grade machine like this that didn't wear very well in the first place, especially outside of its warranty period. There's lots of parts in here that can be repurposed for other machines, and there is some value if you happen to see one of these and if you want to gut it and, and do something with. It's kind of a, a good practice machine to do uh, whatever you would like. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to keep this video short, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the big four at the bottom before I say goodbye. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified the next time that I release a video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something about this laptop, even if it's just to take it apart, and I will see you next time.